There was an interesting paper that I think got overlooked last week, and that is Luminate Building Generalist Agents in 3D Open Worlds. So this is basically taking a open sourced Quen 2.5 VL, which is a large language model, and allowing it to play video games using real time feedback. Um, I'll play the video here just to uh, give you guys the rundown. So one thing that you could see in that video was that the mouse is actually moving. Um, you can take a look like in the side of the video, you know, see you see the mouse uh, moving around. It's able to interact with GUI objects, um, NPCs and do combat. And overall, all of this is being done through decision making from the large language model um, through visual inputs that it is uh, registering. So this was a very cool paper um, that I read through last week. Uh, they go through their entire build process to um, training, gathering the data, um, and then the three-stage uh, pipeline that they use to train it. Um, it does it basically outlines an entire recipe in order to uh, replicate this, which is why I've been very interested in this and looking into it. So I'm gonna go over a little bit more um, just of what is on here. So the way that it works is that it has, um, it takes in some type of observation, which is the, uh, like a screenshot from the video game that it's playing. And then it sends it over to the language model to decode some type of action string. And then it takes those actions, uh, streams them back uh, in real time in order to be able to react to the environment um, per the image. And so the way that uh, they trained it was they used about 2000 hours of human gameplay and then um, they that's one stage the next stage they train it with just instructions so in order uh, to to guide it to still be able to understand language and then they give it some reasoning data um, in order to enable it to think about different situations so the way that they labeled this reasoning data was through humans and they basically asked humans to uh, come up with reasoning for a certain um, decisions being made inside of Genshin Impact. And so the the entire paper is a great read. I recommend it if anyone is interested in this type of thing. Um, and then they've also got some more examples here. So um, we see we've got uh, combat here, given some of these instructions like clear the domain, uh, complete daily commissions. Unfortunately, I don't play Genshin, so I don't really know what those mean. Um, and then we have like boss fight. I think this one is super cool. Uh, if we take a look here, um, you know, you can see that it's dodging these um, electric beam things uh, that will obviously do damage. And it's doing all of this in real time, which is the craziest thing to me. Um, and then, you know, it does puzzles, uh, NPC interaction, um, graphical user interface, manipulation, and then um, the ability to instruction or to follow complex instructions is pretty cool because this allows you to specify something more specific um, and it's able to complete it uh, just by changing how you instruct it. So they go into a lot more detail inside of the paper here um, about how they gather the data and how they train it. But kind of the overview, the way that they gather the data is that they hire a bunch of people to play uh, Genshin Impact. Um, they use a key logger and then some type of um, mouse logger to uh, capture the keys that are being pressed and the mouse um, movements that are being done inside of the paper, um, inside of the game. And then they, that's your large pre-training data set. Uh, they train on that. And then they've got a few more stages. And then the way that they actually command um, the uh, game or the way that the model actually commands the game to play is by outputting this sequence of um, mouse movements here. So you've got your adjustments in the mouse, which is your X, Y, Z. Um, and then you've got these different key presses during that small frame um, of time that is uh, being um, 
captured. So in this case, they're doing five hertz, which is every 200 milliseconds. And so these are just all the key presses that are uh, captured inside of that 200 millisecond time frame. And then they train the model to predict these in real time um, in order to actually interact with the game um, in a way that's meaningful. So I haven't really seen anything like this uh, released ever. Um, we do have a little bit of like Google stuff, which is like SEMA and SEMA 2, uh, where they're controlling video games. Uh, but you know, the, this, the thing that is very, very interesting here is that this was done on Quen 2.5. I think I can search it up. Quen 2. Point. Or no, this was actually done on Quen 2 VL, uh, the base model 7B. So this is a model that could technically run locally on most people's computers. Um, or if you have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, this could run on your computer. And then they also tested this on the 2B version um, as well. So that I think we would be able, uh, or a lot more people would be able to use that. So um, yeah, they, they did two different ones, which was the 2B uh, and 7B. Now, there are some issues with the 2B. Like, they say that there is um, overtraining at around 1,200 hours of training data. And so it ends up overfitting, and uh, the quality of the uh, model ends up decreasing at that point in time. But still, 25% success rate uh, compared to like, a uh, plain model is pretty crazy. And you can see that we've got on this right hand side here, the capabilities emerging for the 7B model. Um, it's able to learn object interaction within 100 hours of training data, combat by 200. And then all of these other ones come with scaling with more uh, training data. So for me, this 100 hours is actually pretty interesting because I think I could play Genshin for 100 hours <laughs> and, and gather some data to, to train a model myself. Uh, that's really what I've been um, looking into uh, recently. And so um, I'm not going to go into too much more details. But another interesting thing is that they kind of tested this with other open source or with other models that are out there. So Grok, Quen 3 VL, uh, Dobao 1.6 Vision, GPT-5, Gemini 2.5 uh, versus their uh, fine-tuned or trained models here. And you can just see that the results are staggeringly different. Uh, you can see most models fail at combat. Um, they can do NPC interaction, uh, some can do puzzles, some can do collection, um, but the overall average is just way below these fine-tuned models. And I actually have kind of a small demo for Quen 3 uh, that I'm going to try out in this video um, that I've been kind of working with. And so the way that they allow for these models to interact with the games is that they use something called Cradle. Let's see, Cradle which is right here, which is kind of like a framework um, that uh, was designed by these people actually. So this this was actually uh, designed by this um, this team or some members of this team last year. And you can find the repository here, uh, which is this paper, Empowering Foundation Agents Towards General Computer Control. So they actually released the entire code base for how they uh, implemented this last year, uh, where they were able to kind of go through like Red Dead Redemption, Stardew Valley, uh, stuff like that. But the way this one is done is step by step and it's not real time at all, um, but it's uh, kind of a, a, a good way to maybe do like a proof of concept for some of these vision language models. Um, but I want to jump into kind of that cradle example that um, I just talked about, which is here. So um, I've got VLLM running right here with uh, Quen 3 VL 8 B instruct, and I'm going to use it to control Expedition 33. And so um, I've been spending the whole week to get this all set up um, for just kind of figuring out how these vision language models can interact with environments and how things can be done uh, with VLLMs. And it's, it's pretty cool. So I designed a task in here, which is to uh, pick up the flower in the starting area for Expedition 33. And so um, I have like this task description where it's like, look around and pick up the single red flower on the bench in the starting area. And then some subtasks uh, to kind of help it through. Okay, so hopefully this 
does not crash on me uh, because my CPU has been uh, running through some issues with Exposition 33 due to Unreal stuff. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go over into this right hand side and then navigate into the cradle environment here. And so I'm gonna run this command and I'll, I'll go ahead and actually show that it's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, launch. Um, oh, I need to start up one more thing. Okay, so I need to install, I need to start up this like embeddings model too. Um, but yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and just run here and it's going to pop up the window. So, well, first what it's going to do is it's going to register the skills um, and then it's going to uh, open up the window. Okay, and so on the bottom left hand corner, you can see it's doing requests. And then on the right hand side, you can see it's receiving those requests. Um, and then it's going to be fairly fast, but you'll be able to see that there's reasoning in the left hand side uh, where we have like movement. And so you can see that uh, Gustav just moved um, using the key press D. And so it's going to move through this until it finds the flower. So let's see how long it takes for that to happen. Okay, so it actually failed there um, after 50 attempts. So I'm going to uh, try that again and uh, increase the attempts count here because it was passing many times last night. You know, when you do a YouTube video, now it decides to fail. So as things are, I'm going to just increase these count up here and get this up and running again. So, okay, so it failed one more time. I'm not sure why this this worked yesterday a, a few times. So I changed up the prompt a little bit to be a little bit more specific to look around with the mouse to find the red flower. And let's see if that works. All right, so one last attempt, uh, changed up the prompt, and I am starting from a different area that's a little bit closer to the flower um, to see if we can get a successful demo in the video. Now, I have done this from that farther end, and it did work yesterday, but don't know what's happening today. Uh, Could have just been lucky yesterday, but today, unluck of YouTube is happening, so. Okay, so it's spotted the flower and has now started walking to it. So that's uh, that's some good f that's some good progress. So now we're in um, interactable range. You can see the E has popped up on the uh, the screen there. So let's see if it clicks E. Nope, nope, it walked past it. So I guess we'll see. Okay, it did interact with E there, so um, now let's see if it goes through the dialogue. That's kind of broken, so I'll have to go back and check that out, but uh, let's see how it does here. We should be in the end goal here. This, this is fairly easy for the model to do. Okay, move to take it. Alrighty, and then the last one, it just needs to select yes now. Okay, so the terminal said uh, yes, so I think it should do it now. Should be there. Woo! Alrighty, so there we go. We picked up the, the flower in the starting area in Expedition 33. Um, and... Man, so I've been watching this for about 40 minutes um, and we finally got it. So cool. That is a success, I would say there. Now, there are a few issues with this that I got to go back and, and take a look. Like sometimes it seems like the model is um, one step behind in terms of the screenshot that it's analyzing. So I don't know why that's an issue here. Um, but uh, as you can see, we just got through that where, it is, where it's using um, the uh, vision language model to get through the process here to uh, make decisions and pick up the flower in the starting area. So the only issue is it's very slow but the proof of concept is here that uh, the decision-making mechanisms do uh, do work. 
as long as we're specific enough here. So yeah, going back to the whole Luminae thing here, um, I think it's completely doable and it's completely possible uh, to get a small version of this trained up. And uh, the only issue here is the data set. So um, I don't know, I, I, I guess I've got to go and, and play a bunch of Genshin Impact or think of a game to play and record uh, so that I can try to develop a data set here. But I like playing video games, so uh, um, I guess I just need to record the video game playing to make a data set, and this will give me an excuse to uh, keep playing video games. So, oh, and I wanted to talk about one more thing. Like I, I, I didn't cover this, um, but uh, it's very important too. This isn't just a Genshin player. Uh, the interesting thing is that it um, generalized to um, other tasks beyond Genshin, such as. Um, Honkai Star Reveal, which is a turn-based game, and then Weathering Waves, where it's able to complete, uh, it says, 100 minutes of the main story in Weathering Waves. Now, I know Genshin and Weathering Waves are kind of the same, or similar, uh, but Star Rail is a little bit different. And so the uh, cool thing about this is that it is learned, it learned how to play on Genshin, but that might be able to generalize to other things too. So yeah, just thought I would mention that as I don't think I, I mentioned that earlier in the video. Um, yeah, that's kind of just all I wanted to cover in today's video. Um, this was a paper that I think got overshadowed and overlooked um, by a lot of the releases that have been happening recently. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be it for today's video. If you found anything useful, please leave a comment down below. And once again, I'd like to thank all the members of the channel for supporting me. Very much appreciate it. And I will see you guys later.